All right, well, good evening, everyone. Um, I believe we can probably get started now. I see no one else in our waiting room. So if anyone comes in, I'll just admit them, but I think we can go ahead and get started. Um, so I, I think I recognize everyone who's uh, with us this evening, but uh, for those of you, just in case you don't know me, my name is Brenna Gerard, I'm with the town. Um, and I have been working with uh, Farida and Hassan and Dr. Habib on this project for about eight months now. It's very exciting that we've reached this point. Um, so before I just hand it over, uh, just a couple quick admin things. Um, just so everyone is aware, we will be recording this session. So if you um, are uncomfortable with your video or your audio being part of that recording, feel free to turn them off and keep them off. Um, we are hoping to keep this recording and put it on the town website. So just that you have that in, in the back of your mind. Um, I will also be saving the chat uh, just for our, our records as well for any feedback or comments or great ideas that are born out of this session. So just bear that in mind, I will be, I will be keeping uh, both of those things. Uh, and with that in mind, um, I think I'm ready to hand that over to you, Dr. Habib. Thank you very much, Brenna. I uh, hope you can hear me right now well. And, and thank you, everyone, those who are here to hear about uh, the outcome of the work that both Intern Hassan and Fariba did in consultation with Brenna and, and multiple other staff from, from the city. Um, so I will give you a kind of uh, an overview of what we have found and what we are recommending in terms of public transit. Um, so if I would like to just recall, or maybe I can just a small way uh, introduce ourselves. Um, I'm Hassan Habib. I'm a transportation professor at the Dalhousie University. Hassan is doing PhD uh, in the civil engineering department and Fariba is uh, finishing her uh, master's. And this is a part of the MyTech project in partnership with the town of Happy Valley Goose Bay. Um, uh, uh, you probably some of you were in our earlier sessions, the focus group sessions. So some of uh, our presentation might be a repetition, um, at least like uh, the initial stages. But some uh, are are the outcome of our survey, your focus group discussion, as well as the design exercise that we have gone through. So, so as you all probably recall, like if you were with us in, in earlier uh, discussions, we tried to do public transit feasibility study uh, for the town of um, Happy Valley Goose Bay, and this is a part of a MyTech project. Uh, today, I will try to give some background. I would like to offer you some more detail about the survey results that we got from you um, uh, through a, an online portal that uh, we collected information about travel behavior um, and your aspiration for public transit. Uh, we have conducted a focus group, so we'll offer some um, summary results of, of that, and then we'll talk about a little bit of technical and financial feasibility. This project is also coming with a, a report, uh, so further details, uh, you'll find those through Brenna on, on those report. I will I'll in, uh, conclude this uh, session by offering some uh, concluding remarks. So as you just recap, like we tried to understand travel behavior of the city, we try to understand how public transit working in different rural areas or similar sized areas, and we try to analyze transit routes, service options, some uh, transit technologies, we tried to get as much information as we could from you. And so you are the designer in certain way, we try to understand like what kind of aspiration that you have on the ground. So we try to incorporate all of those and thank you uh, to all who have provided uh, a tremendous amount of support throughout this uh, project. Particularly, we got probably the highest in my career, 34 alternative design from the community members, uh, 34 networks. So it's, it's a quite a remarkable uh, contribution from the uh, from the community groups and, and individuals, those who supported that. So uh, at the end, our objective was providing some possible transit system for the town, town of Happy Valley, Goose Bay. We started with some background analysis, environmental scan, some best practices, 
We did that travel survey, which is uh, the, the ba backbone of the entire research. Um, some GIS help as well as analysis, some public engagement. That's what we did. Uh, stakeholder uh, group and then did the feasibility studies. So today is kind of a wrap up uh, open house. Um, if uh, there was an old good days, we would have been in the in person showing you more details. Uh, but in certain way, it also helps. We are using online portal uh, to share our survey findings, which might be available for others to watch those who could not come to this session, uh, which is sometimes very useful. So sometimes COVID gave give us some some good 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 uh, newer way of uh, doing 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 things. So town of town of Happy Valley Goose Bay. I don't want to tell the stories that probably you know more than us, but we tried to understand your major hubs, your airport, your connections, multimodal trans Labrador uh, highway, and the network itself, Hamilton Drive Road is one of the major thoroughfare there. We tried to understand those physical piece. We also looked at your business establishment from EPOI data and also internal, uh, internal data, try to map them up. Uh, uh, and and understand that we looked at various best practices in the end in the focus group uh, we gave a very detailed discussion about each of them I will highlight a couple of them uh, today here but we looked at less than 10,000 population and some uh, more than 10,000 population because they have some innovative aspects of transit system that could inspire or give us some lessons learned. <clears throat> Uh, Yermat is one, one of the uh, area that we uh, looked very closely. It's 6,000 uh, population. They came up with a fixed route, very successful operationally since uh, 2016. Route length is 14 kilometer that they have with 17 stops and frequency or headway of 45 minutes and bus capacity of 14 passengers. And then town of Bridgewater, another similar uh, fixed route uh, uh, for a population of 8,000, um, started in 2017 as a pilot project, and uh, also 42 uh, of a minutes of a one single loop, and, and another double loop is still under consideration to cross loop we, we talked about, and that was also part of my work uh, in partnership with uh, CBCL Consulting. Um, so those two design, they pick the loop design one first and they will move forward uh, to the next, uh, depending on the demand, how it goes. We also looked at more um, regional connections because there are some contacts in your town that uh, demands that. So we did some work in the past with the Lunenburg connecting Bridgewater, Mohon Bay, if you're familiar with uh, Nova Scotia geography, but there are some 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 interesting linkages that can be envisioned um, uh, connecting Lunenburg with the Bridgewater, Mohon Bay. So we looked at those regional connectivity um, for a more sparse population, uh, what we can do. So those guided us in, in certain way at the initial stage. Uh, but the most important one was the survey. And we are very happy to report that we got almost 380 um, uh, 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 responses. And this is the gender distribution that you can see in the left, quite wide, widely um, a working group and wide, widely uh, uh, represented group. Um, more female responded than male, uh, so that we uh, look at those contexts. Household income is a, a 50 to 200. That's the predominant group. Household size of different, uh, different types, couples, couples with children, uh, all represented quite reflective of your census information as far as I, we could co collect. Now, in terms of transportation, if you look at, um, it's a predominantly car-oriented uh, 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 municipality. Um, most of them, 84%, um, own car, and almost 10% have somehow access to car. But we have to keep in mind, though, there is 8.6% who do not have any access to car in this community, at least from the respondent group that we have learned so far. Vehicle ownership have a one, two, or three plus. So right hand side graph shows those 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 uh, kind of a mobility tool ownership uh, pieces. Uh, in terms of travel behavior, seventy seven percent drive alone. 
Um, there are also passenger car, um, meaning sharing the car, uh, 11%, and walking is 5 to 6% for the commute trips. Commute distance is in between zero to 10 kilometer, very short distance, but there are some, uh, some percentages, 12% for 16 to 20 uh, kilometer, as well as there are 50 plus commute trips from this respondent group. So there are some, some variety, some heterogeneity within those distance uh, kilometer traveled. Uh, distribution of trips uh, by purpose. Uh, you can see work trip predominant, but there are healthcare, shopping, personal business, and recreational trips as well. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was very surprised on the personal business uh, trips uh, is, is quite, quite, quite uh, prevalent there, at least from the time period we collected the data for. Uh, travel companionship, like you can also see, much more disaggregated way of looking at those alone spouse, children, like who they travel with. Uh, we also look uh, very briefly from that survey, uh, like whether there was a change in your commute. So it looks like there are a uh, lot of people working from home, partially working from home, and, and some other changes happen uh, in, in COVID-19. Uh, but surprisingly, there are not much change in the commute mode choices, um, meaning, as a matter of fact, drive alone goes up from 77 to 79% and automobile passenger and other things remain same, walking increases a little bit as well. So it looks like there is a gap, like even when I look at pre-COVID and COVID time, this mode shift uh, graph, um, there, are, there are not much alternative opportunities for people to, to explore or do their uh, daily activities using uh, other, other forms, particularly public transit. Um, uh, so we, in the survey, we also look, uh, asked people to report how they see the benefits of public transit. Uh, looks like people are identifying it might provide more accessibility, more safer option, affordable option, cheaper option, <clears throat> employment opportunity. And we rank order them so you can see on that graph like how it goes. There are also improvement of lifestyle and mobility, the community involvement. Uh, as a predominant uh, benefit that the, the survey respondents uh, felt. Um, we all looked at the barriers of implementing a public transit, a small population and car dependency, which is uh, consistent with our data as well. Um, survey data, uh, car dependency is a big, big piece, geography, uh, low ridership potential, snow is, is another one, and, and the taxes, um, uh, uh, capital, sorry, capital uh, investment, funding, infrastructure, municipal support, the financial part is also one, one barrier um, be identified in, in, the, sur in, the, in the survey. Um, public transit, uh, but, but, but the community sees there are alignment with the strategic direction that um, Happy Valley Goose Bay plan 2017 to 2022 um, have some alignment with. And surprisingly, it aligns with most um, uh, strategic direction that you have adopted uh, through council and, and your community uh, consultation, economic vibrancy, quality of life, infrastructure renewal, municipal leadership or environmental stewardship you see that the, that aligns with the public transit goals, which is very encouraging and very, very, very positive. Um, then we started looking at like how much willingness to ride or willingness to pay might look like within this group. Um, looks like uh, there are um, like almost 47% uh, uh, likely or very likely to to use use public transit. So quite a big enthusiasm in in my opinion. Uh, we did the Lunenburg as well as the Bridgewater. I would say the Happy Valley Goose Bay outperforms those number. Um, willingness to pay like majority of them two dollars to four dollars, like sixty percent, and some can go even seventeen percent can go for four to six dollars. Uh, very few less than two dollars, and in general, two to three dollars is is going in in a highly utilized uh, so transit services. Uh, but uh, you are in the same same bulk park where uh, rural transit are charging for uh, public transit. So there is willingness to pay for public transit for the operational cost at least. 
Expected root options looks like fixed route is the most popular with some hybrid, um, not not dialeride or more paratransit um, options uh, is 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 um, in 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 favor yeah, uh, uh, by by the community members. Um, and there are frequencies. We try to also learn a little bit about more like what is the expectation of the community on the frequency bus. Bus stops, people want very nearby um, bus stops, 500 uh, uh, meter, meter to one kilometer, one kilometer to two kilometer. But there are willingness to walk also up to 10 to 15 kilometer, majority of them. Uh, so there are those flexibility, which sometimes like is hel very helpful for designing a reliable, efficient, uh, public transit if there is a that walkability uh, potentials are are there vehicle options large van and the community bus is in the popular context uh, almost tie in in my my opinion and i will reflect a little bit more on our our choice of the bus um, at the end um, like how we were thinking all options of cash uh, fare collection is is looks like what uh, the community or the disrespondent group uh, would like to go for uh, publicly operated buses or public private partnership is the the is the uh, way to go as part of this uh, this uh, uh, survey uh, as a matter of fact 52 percent is really looking at the traditional public transit uh, if we go for it. Um, transit connectivity, there are local connections, but there are also local and connect, uh, regional connections. Both are both are a, a possibility or, or desired outcome pre or preference, whatever we would like to uh, make. We tried to also collect a um, lot of destinations, like what destinations you would like to go for. Hospitals rank highest, um, airport, co-op, uh, North Merth, college, Spruce Park, Post office, Hamilton Drug, so that you'll see some 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 high highly highly recommended um, major destinations to connect for. We did after this quantitative analysis, or in in parallel to this quantitative analysis, we did a focus group, at least two focus group. I say one is with the uh, we did initial kickoff with the municipal officials as well, but we did more uh, in depth focus group with the community and. We asked about transportation issues, major benefits, what should be the guiding principle, and also route design and key destinations so that we have another set of understanding, uh, more qualitative understanding of like how you uh, want to design your transit. And it's uh, very important to uh, get the community involved in designing their transit services, because in that case, you understand the complexity, you understand the, the need, and you also understand uh, to build your own packages as you go when you implement those, those uh, systems. Uh, major transportation issues, not having a public transit system is shown as one, uh, one, one issue. Affordability could be, taxes could be um, uh, problematic. AT connections were also uh, being uh, raised like that can be improved. Um, and, and also demography groups, seniors and children, how that can, so, um, uh, that can be served by transportation alternative is, is raised as a major issue. Uh, benefits similar to the ones that you saw in the survey, um, but there are some better understanding of providing access to services, groceries, pharmacies, uh, and financial um, establishments and airport. Um, those those were, were, were landed. Guiding principles, those are like uh, the, the, we synthesize them. The, uh, you want an accessible, safe, and reliable transit for all ages and abilities, affordable transit, because affordability came in, in the survey, in the focus group, a, a big way it should be frequent linked with key destination. That was also a guideline we got. Oh, it needs to be operational during all season, including the, in the winter, uh, easy to navigate and efficient. So that's, that's the efficiency piece came, 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 came as well. So, so we kept those guiding principles when we start thinking about the system design and we started uh, looking at what are the alternatives that we got. 
uh, as I mentioned at the very beginning, I'm, I was really surprised to get almost 34 network ideas, different, very similar, but also different network ideas came from the community. And it helped us in a, in a big way because uh, we could not, um, uh, we could not uh, visit um, uh, Happy Valley Goose Bay. Generally, we, what we do for COVID and others, but like your input was, was tremendous. Uh, for understanding um, um, like where we can look at some some potential. So this is one example. Uh, I, we haven't picked any uh, any way which one is good, bad, or that way we haven't evaluated. I'm just showing some examples of like what you drew. We use an online tool and also um, there was a, a follow-up after the focus group about those those network possibilities. So you can see some some ideas from uh, from your community members. Um, to do local connections as well as um, uh, uh, regional connection with uh, 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 with uh, with, uh, with the external community. Um, um, so based on all what we got from the list of key key uh, destinations and the network ideas that we. Um, we got as well as our own evaluation of some uh, lanes and, and possibilities of connecting major areas. Uh, uh, we came up with a two phased approach of route. So we proposed a loop one in the phase one, um, uh, which, which, which start from Nova Northmark terminal and, and goes uh, through the Hamilton River Road and, and go to the airport and then come back uh, using the other route um, uh, to, the, to the North Mart. So uh, we, we, uh, we, we, we selected North Mart, one potential location for a start point uh, because we found, say, for example, in uh, Bridgewater, um, in their big box store, like the turning capacity in, in the parking lot, as well as like a destination where there might be people doing a lot of shopping with groceries and uh, this might help people to go there. So, so, so we, we send it's a popular location or close by locations for, for many pieces. Um, so, and it's also the equidistance from, from air, airport. So we tried to make sure like there are some slack in both sides to maintain um, the schedule that we uh, provided. Um, so that's, that's how we came up with the first phase, which is mainly local connections. But we also came up, uh, there is, should be a phase two um, as the first phase one uh, get, uh, become successful to connect the airport uh, with uh, Shiaji, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm my apology for uh, this. I, I tried, uh, uh, and um, Hassan, you you jump in if you want to help me on that. But uh, connecting that community is was one of the area we emphasized and tried to see like how will be uh, how that may, may be possible to create employment opportunity and connectivity with with that with the community. So that's that's wonderful. From in terms of the operational hour, uh, we wanted a weekday 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. and weekend uh, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Like as a, as a tentatively, uh, we don't know enough uh, to suggest other alternative time, but we we we, so we we felt that like these are typical uh, transit transit hours. Like if we are really serious about a fixed transit. Uh, to look at, uh, we 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 found that our phase one requires uh, almost fifty minutes uh, a loop time with the ten minutes break in the airport, uh, and our phase two is one twenty minutes. Uh, so we came up with the schedule as well, and we tried to do it by by the clock so that it's easier to remember uh, because those are sometimes a good quality of when we do the scheduling of those uh, phase one. We felt that that will be the starting point for this city to uh, for this town to consider and then once they feel that that's working well and have enough know-how and capacity within the community or within the town for the maintenance and uh, operating transit it's a new experience for even for the staff and and for um, for for the community in general so there will be a um, a successful phase one will lead to phase two 
Uh, we looked at multiple uh, vehicle options. Our, our report will have, have those. We struggled on this one uh, a little bit. There are two options. One was large van. Another one uh, is the community bus was uh, in your survey, uh, was, uh, was quite, quite uh, uh, high, highly ranked. Um, in Bridgewater, I recommended uh, the large van to begin with. Uh, and, um, uh, uh, and, and, but, but in this case, uh, the reason why we went a little bit larger possibility, 10 to 20 uh, passenger community bus, because we saw there is a deep connection with the tourism. And, and during the summer, the ridership might go up. And these are upfront costs. The price difference is not as large in transit. Actually, the, uh, the driver's cost and the operation cost is high than, than the capital cost uh, to begin with. Um, so, so we thought like the community bus will be a much better options, which may or, uh, be useful for uh, tourists or tourism or, or during, during, during those times could, could, could be quite, quite interesting, uh, interesting for, for, for others to, to use for the large group or other kinds. Fair collections, like we, we, we took mainly Yermouth lessons. Um, they started with a more smart way of doing those smart card and other kinds uh, and ticketing. Uh, but at the end, like there are a community um, uh, kind of a recommendation after a couple of months of operation that cash option is necessary because sometimes those are might not be available to all. So keeping them for all groups um, uh, like we felt like that that should be keeping cash and ticket first and then a possibility for a smart card if there is uh, lower lower cost options can be uh, found uh, feasible. Uh, so we also tried to do some financial uh, again, like it's, do not um, uh, read too much on those financial number. These are more uh, kind of industry standards. There could be vehicle purchase up cost of one sixty thousand dollars. But if you can uh, partner with some um, existing bus companies, say Bridgewater got that uh, almost free through uh, decommissioned bus from HRM. So there might be those po possibilities too. We budgeted on the bus stops. In terms of bus stops, we thought about there will be couple of fixed route, but there will be a lot of flag uh, bus stops where you do not need much structure. Instead, that will be like, if you are there, then the bus will, will stop. The reason why we consider this limited number of bus stops so that there is a less dual time and we can actually have a better uh, travel time um, in case there is not enough uh, ridership along the route. Um, on every stop, so um, so that's that's how we we thought about. I we thought that advertising marketing is very important, particularly for a new service to begin with, um, to have that confidence and trust built and and the service availability known to all. So we kept some some budgets there. So total capital cost we are looking at uh, to, uh, under two two hundred thousand um, dollar if we go for um, like some sort of a starting package. And these are more details about um, the operation cost. As you can see, 50 minute uh, travel time loop. Um, we have some uh, suggestion for some modification in our uh, route. Uh, we, uh, we will do that, but it will not add too much time uh, in our uh, estimation. Um, and phase two is 120 minutes. As you can see, that's a 92 kilometer loop and 24 kilometer loop is the phase one. Head away, we, we, we took your survey guidance one hour, um, uh, one hour for uh, phase one, and you can see some service hours estimated, uh, which gave us some numbers for the fuel cost and, and driver's cost. We uh, started with a two driver possibility. Sometimes it can be run by one driver, um, depending on how, 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 how the operating Hours can be determined um, based on your affordability and needs, but we, we, we recommend to start with two. There are advantages of having two and, and, and the operation cost probably will be uh, $300,000 if we have a very frequent, like we were very generous in terms of like uh, coming up with a, 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 a whole day services. Uh, we considered a, a peak hour service only um, but later on, 
um, decided not to go there, uh, particularly when we looked at the trip purposes um, uh, from your survey. Looks like it's not just the commute, like people uh, do lots of personal business, lots of shopping and other types uh, throughout the day. We also look, uh, check back with uh, uh, the guiding principles that we got. Uh, which ones like this trans service should be all ages and abilities and particularly seniors and children. Um, there is a trend throughout North America and Europe uh, to get more frequencies during um, during off peak hours. Um, so uh, we started with a one hour uh, like uh, throughout the day, but there are opportunities if the city can uh, think to start or to keep it feasible or affordable, um, they can have a lesser frequency during off peak hour and uh, in, the, in the pilot runs, um, then uh, peak hour could be one hour. So, but we budgeted like more, uh, I would say like what looks like a uh, reasonable uh, potential uh, but that can be reduced to reduce the operational cost. Uh, we also tried to see some revenue generation. We, our um, revenue uh, ridership forecast came uh, predominantly from uh, Bridgewater, uh, Bridgewater ridership forecast, uh, not forecast, Bridgewater ridership uh, numbers. Um, as a matter of fact, I, I got that uh, a question in a in couple of weeks ago with the, the, your newly elected mayor and, and the council um, uh, to look at the, the, uh, what happened from our for ridership forecast and the real ridership. Um, and we, we can report that in Bridgewater, actually, uh, the real ridership uh, surpassed uh, outperformed actually the, the forecast that we did. So we took more uh, this, um, uh, this um, optimistic, now each city is different, uh, more optimistic view that ridership could be 26,000 uh, in the entire year, which could yield uh, with a different uh, scenarios of pricing $2, $3 and $4 uh, to, to certain two. In our recommendation, in our report, we selected $3 per ride. Um, looks like a reasonable, uh, reasonable expectation uh, because pricing has also something to do with the ridership. Uh, if ridership goes up, like then, 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 then um, it it probably should be in in, in some sweet spot. So we, we, we found that three dollars looks like a reasonable uh, proposal uh, to go for. We emphasized on the branding, marketing, and and partnership. And Hassan and 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 Fariba, as a matter of fact, came up with this happy ride as a name for your transit. Now, again, we do not want to impose any any branding exercise. It should come from uh, from community. This is more of just an idea that you can you can uh, think through. It has some relationship with the, the promoting the city for tourism, promoting the to city to to the name that you have some uh, some some um, some relationship with. But there could be uh, other ways of like branding and marketing can be through smartphone through different kind of it's a very small investment say uh, uh, um, uh, buttons or magnets those those kind of things and we found that these things can be done even in a lower cost if the local um, advocacy groups, the active transportation group, or um, more, uh, uh, more, more of those uh, co green communities, they could be also volunteering their time and really get those things going because uh, this is uh, bringing some change in, in, in the town and, and it could be could very interesting. Uh, marketing can be also done in partnership with the business owners because in certain way we found transit always offer benefits to businesses um, at the end. Uh, it gives, so, so maybe some of the bus can use their, um, um, their uh, advertisement and other kinds of uh, things. Um, we have not uh, uh, put that as a revenue stream, but we, there, there is a potential just to, to make some point. It could be uh, even for some terminals uh, structure or stop structure. So any add on uh, to the public transit could come from those partnership 
um, as, as you build. And it's also very important to have those connections um, uh, for some employers which might ben get benefit from that there, even some partnership with, um, uh, with, with a transit ticket uh, from say Nova Mart or other kinds, depending on the, how the partnership evolves. So I can see a lot of potential and a lot of other cities are doing those kind of things. Um, in, in certain way, public transit is a package. So you can start with a very skeletal bare bone structure, and then you can add on as it flourish and as uh, the community wants to um, uh, embrace it. Um, um, there could be also uh, uh, various other ways of like um, helping different uh, demographic group. We have uh, social justice issues in, in various ways. Um, we can look at even helping a reduced rate for senior citizens. Um, children's uh, could be free with parents, like it's, it's in a way training the future generation to use alternative modes, greener modes um, that that you can uh, that you can uh, think of, and this could be also helpful um, for applying for funding opportunities for federal government or provincial government. Uh, reduce rate for employees if there are some um, uh, smart commute programs in place. Um, some other ways of like uh, bringing students and and college students and and other hotels tourism uh, there could be some some interesting things evolving as we can see um, uh, although we have not written this in the report I can even see there are sometimes if there is not enough use of those buses can be used for the charter buses during tourism season. So that could be busy at times. So by season, we can also think through how we can utilize this, this piece of uh, resource if we go for it. Um, uh, so there are those opportunities. We also look at some funding possibilities, not in a bigger, bigger, bigger way, but there could be provincial funding. There are lots of uh, Infrastructure Canada funding, floating green building fund and other kinds or QTA funds. So there are always some opportunities. So when you have a shovel ready project, like probably this one uh, may be, that could be another way of seeking for um, uh, matching funds and, and other ways. There are lots of lots of things happening uh, on the transit side, greening infrastructure side, and, and, and various other opportunities in the last couple of years. So in summary, uh, looks like um, based on our survey, based on our focus group discussion, um, looks like public transit is beneficial for several reasons, um, giving access to a new um, possibility, safety, affordability, and cost. Um, the survey uh, shows it's a very car dominant um, uh, society, but it has aspiration um, uh, to become uh, to 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 invite public transit. Um, uh, there are also 48% um, wants to willing to ride the public bus. There are also willingness to pay up uh, uh, al almost $4. Uh, we recommended $3, but, but, but there are uh, opportunities to like the way that town feels like to look at those numbers. Community bus predominantly for a uh, potential use for tourism, um, um, but large van can also work if that's the uh, way to start. Um, because similar similar ridership is feasible depending on, um, but our recommendation is community bus. Uh, and we wanted this two phased fixed route options, a local connection first to try it out, and then thinking about uh, extending that regional connections um, in, in the following years. Thank you very much. So that's in a nutshell, like what we have done so far. Um, and the final report will, will be probably sending you um, uh, to your um, town very soon or and my tech, the funding agency is as well. And I'm opening the floor for questions and I'll give this session uh, the, the my, my microphone to Brenna if you, if you want to moderate or like help us uh, navigate the question and answer period. Thank you so much, Dr. Habib. This is so exciting. <laughs> it's very great to hear. Um, and yes, um, if anyone has any questions, um, feel free to just turn on your mic and, and chime in. Um, I think you can just unmute yourself, but if you're having any issues, um, feel free to use the chat as well. So I'll open it up. Wow. 
Well, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll jump in, uh, Brenna. Thanks very much, Dr. Aviv. It's George Andrews here, the mayor. I'm really excited um, in terms of uh, what I'm seeing uh, because of the, the need that's been expressed in the community. I think this is something that, uh, uh, you know, is, will require, um, you know, very, very careful and uh, additional uh, conversation. But um, I had the pleasure this past weekend of, uh, unfortunately, I missed the mayor of Yarmouth, uh, who wasn't there, and the mayor of Lunenburg, who I think may have participated in the Bridgewater process, she had to leave early. So I didn't have the chance, but I, I have reached out to them to have a, a conversation, but I'm glad that you came back with the uh, with the uh, the information that was asked. Um, in terms of just a question, because <clears throat> of course it comes all down to, to money sometimes as being the final, final sort of decision. In the, uh, the Bridgewater um, information and in your, um, in your model there for the $3 and the ridership kind of stuff, would that be based on, say, a, a, an upper end ridership, or how how was the figure of I think I think it works out to like seventy people a day or something, uh, yeah. if I look at your figures. Uh, is that, for instance, in your in your opinion or your group's opinion, is that a uh, you know like a, a high user, low user, mid user? How how would how would you portray that in terms of like Wanna, from a revenue perspective? Yeah, sure. Um, I I would say it's a medium forecast we took. We didn't take the high. We didn't take the low. I, I anticipated that question might come. So you can see the slide right now. It's a 2019 number from Bridgewater yeah. from January to December. Um, so the annual trips was 34,000. So we assume a medium, more 26,000, a little bit less than the Bridgewater. So we assume that probably Bridgewater uh, might not might not be achieved uh, with, with the kind. So, so I would say we have not over forecast now, um, but because the actual ridership in 2019 is 34,000. We also considered another piece in 2020, the ridership went down because of COVID, right? So it's, it's yes. a terminal time. So, so there might be, because you will be uh, starting this at, at that period. So I would say we have not take the, the highest possible uh, ridership forecast, but more medium. Uh, medium expectation, not the low expectation. We, uh, depending on the survey, we see some enthusiasm, some interest. So, so uh, our our estimate is, I would say, medium forecast. Yeah, and that's 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 great. And just my last uh, question in terms of the community bus concept and your your uh, recommendation to go that route, um, was there any discussion or consideration or research into in terms of it operating in like you know our harsh winter, you know, uh, snow be. sort of environment? I think all 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 large buses as well as uh, community buses are quite quite uh, well built for winter operations. Only difference uh, maybe just winter tires or or, or other sure. other kind of change. But but generally these are made for uh, Canadian winter and and many other northern northern towns, northern Ontario or BC have used similar kind of a bus system. So I will not be very, very uh, worried on that. So we looked at that because those those are the kind of things they, they do. Sure. And uh, like I say, from my perspective, I, I thought the numbers, I expected the numbers to be much higher, uh, to be honest with you. So I'm kind of excited about that. And I'm just excited that uh, I think there's, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of opportunity here for partnerships and maybe, uh, you know, um, when we're, when we're looking at, you know, just a, an operating cost, the capital cost set aside, but the operating operating cost that, you know, what you would, had done here, I think with the multiple partnerships that are, are able in our community here between different groups, I, I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of impressed and looking forward to uh, exploring that, that option. So thank you very much for the information. And I'm, I'm sure we'll be probably reaching out uh, after discussions around the council table to, uh, to gain some more, uh, some more of your knowledge. So thanks very much. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mr. Thanks, Brenna. Thank you, Brenna. Thank you. Uh, any other questions at all? Feel free to just chime in. Uh, no need to raise your hand. say that um, congratulations for Eva and Hassan on the happy ride name. I really like that. So. <laughs> Good brain child. <laughs> um, I have a question if um, about the two phase approach. Um, 
what would you recommend about kind of the the um, the length of time between the stages? Like, would you would you recommend that we we perhaps try a pilot for one year of just the kind of municipal level loop and then move on the following year? What what would you say there? Yeah, yeah, that that, that was like what we are envisioning the at least one year one year mainly to familiarize how to run the transit system. Initially, we, we initially thought to recommend the entire route, but it's a long route like uh, in terms of that. So there might be maintenance issues, might be like other transit operational issues we have not anticipated in our study, for instance. So, so that is why we thought like a, a local connections to begin to gain expertise and experience about how to run public transit, uh, the governance issues, like which is like more your internal pieces, but sometimes those could be quite even a finding a say garage to fix your bus, right? So, so, so small, small issues, uh, tiny details sometimes could be quite, 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 quite uh, problematic. So one year, uh, but I will also caution that we should not wait too much uh, from one phase to another, if this is the because the interest and 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 the the like we heard about uh, those those community need is 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 tremendous. And if if we connect this public transit issue with the tourism, uh, I think connecting the regional looks very very promising because that's how we can brand. Um, we are branding, say for example, in Nova Scotia, Blue Route, which is a province wide connections of all trade. Like when we are talking about it, it looks crazy, meaning connecting Sydney to uh, Yermak by trail system. Like sometimes it's crazy, but it's such a tremendous uh, uh, branding tool for Nova Scotia as a destination for tourism, for hiking, biking, and just in general, how progressive we are. So I can see those kind of same like parallel thought of having local and regional collection, not waiting too much. So one year pilot learning how to run a public transit and then going for that regional looks like a very reasonable approach. Great, thank you so much. Anyone else have any questions? to digest here and you did say um i imagine you do need a little bit of time for the actual completion of the physical report uh do you have a sense maybe a few more weeks before we could expect i i think probably one week one and a half yeah i think we are almost done <laughs> we did in parallel we did in parallel um some some work so probably one and a half like we we, we might be or two weeks maximum right hassan yeah, for the report submission. Yes, we are almost done. We can make it within yeah. two weeks. Yeah. Two weeks is more than enough, I guess. Yeah. So by reading week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, someone just texted me. They're having a hard time hearing me. Um, are you able to hear me? You can also pose your question if you want in the chat box. Like sometimes like technology or volume might not be working. So feel free to put the question in the chat box as well if you have any queries. Hi, Brenna. I just, uh, not a question, but I just want to say thank you. I think this is a wonderful uh, result of the findings you've got, Dr. Habib, uh, Hassan, Brenna, yourself, as well as your team at Dalhousie. Thanks very much for this. And when you mentioned branding and just connecting the different areas for tourism, but recreation within the community, I think uh, we have numerous places that I'm sure our children, as well as sporting events, would love to use this opportunity. So I think it's a wonderful addition and I'm excited to see it um, once you have it handed back to us within a week or so. So thank you. Thanks, thanks. Thanks, Rolla. I'm hearing no further questions. I don't wanna keep everyone too long. Um, so um, 
One final call out, any last burning questions? And of course, if you if you have a thought after the fact, feel free to email me um, and I can put that to Dr. Habib. And, um, and so don't feel this is your only chance, but we'll give you one last chance here. And if not, I'll let everyone move on with their evening. Thank you very much, everyone. Great. We really enjoyed. We enjoyed. We missed traveling that town. We will do once, like if you go for that transit at some point, because I want to ride that bus if it comes <laughs> comes into true. Thank you so Thank much you. for this. This is um, fantastic to see. I'm. Um, very excited to, to finally see this come together. And thank you, Frida and Hassan, for all of your hard work over the last few months. Yeah, um, you're welcome, Brenna. Wonderful working with you. <laughs> thank you so much, Brenna. And it was wonderful working with you, too. Thank you. <laughs> you're also exciting to uh, make this plan happen in the Happy Valley Guzbe. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, everyone. So I think we'll say that's the conclusion of our evening. Uh, and uh, we'll let you go. And we will. We will stay in touch with the report when we get it uh, in the coming weeks. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Thanks for coming. Bye. Bye, everyone. Have a good evening. Thank you. Good night, everyone.